Hi everyone, my name's Sam and today I'm going to take you through some tips to troubleshoot your structural analysis model if you can't get it to solve or if you're getting some weird results coming back. Um, in my experience, there's, there's nothing more frustrating when you can't get your structural analysis model to solve. Um, you're not really sure where it's going wrong, um, whether you've put an incorrect input or you're missing some information. Um, it's quite a complicated process, structural analysis in general, um, and with a lot of input. So it can be really difficult to identify these issues um, and any mistakes you might have made along the way. Uh, so we thought we'd create this video um, to help um, our users find their way around some of these problems they might be experiencing. Um, we're going to go through the tips that we actually use as onboarding engineers to check the model um, when we have a user who is having some issues. Um, Structural 3D does have some inbuilt checks, so we'll check and notify you if you have some input that's missing or some incorrect information. But there are some other issues that can uh, arise beyond that, and there's often a, a lot more difficult to locate or to identify, so hopefully this video will help. So if you are having trouble solving your model, or if the results aren't what you expect to see, we hope these tips help you solve your structural analysis model. So whenever a user has an issue uh, with their structural model, um, and they notify this of either via live chat or an email, uh, one of the first things I'll do is get them to send us um, the email, so just share, us, share the model with us. And after, and then I'll try to run my own diagnosis to, to go through and find and see if I can find the issue that they're having with their, with their structural model. Um, and one of the first things I'll do is run uh, the inbuilt repair model functionality. So that's under advanced repair model. And what this will actually do is check for a lot of uh, common issues in structural models. Uh, things like uh, duplicate members, duplicate nodes, um, incorrect unit systems, um, even uh, finding disconnected nodes. Uh, so say so if you have a normal member and you've got a node but it's not actually connected to that member, it'll identify issues like that. And what it is is kind of a safeguard for the engineer so they can run this um, automatic diagnosis to, to locate any issues in their model. Um, we also perform like a reasonable and logical check. So, you know, if you've put in any parameters that just seem a little bit out, outside of the bounds of what's reasonable, um, we'll also notify you of those as well. Um, so in this particular model, uh, there are no issues, but if I was to say add in a duplicate member along this edge, and obviously that's really, really difficult to locate um, visually because uh, there's a whole number of members, but that will double the, the stiffness of these two members and can you know, create some considerable inaccuracies in your structural model. Um, but like I said, quite difficult to, um, to locate. Uh, if I run the repair model functionality, it'll identify that there, there is an overlapping member there and will also assist you in repairing it. So if there are some issues with your model that's preventing it from solving because of um, some weird input or some, some, in, some input errors, um, the repair model functionality will help you identify those, particularly on larger models where it's more difficult to visually inspect them. Another thing I look at uh, when I'm looking at a structural model that's failing to solve is the stability of the model. Um, so when we're playing with uh, membrane fixities or support fixities, um, these are the, the boundary conditions or the, um, the degrees of freedom between, between members, um, it can create instabilities in the structural model and that, those instabilities can prevent the uh, FEA from running successfully. So um, it, we are looking at static structures, which means the structures need to be rigid enough to be still. And if, we adding, if we're adding in these degrees of freedom, it can obviously prevent that, um, that stability and, and create issues in the model. So um, if I'm looking at a sample model such as this one, I've played around with the fixities and sometimes the software will alert us um, if it's not constrained enough. Uh, in this case, it's telling us member number one is not constrained enough. So it will give us clues that that is the reason why the model is not solving. But in other scenarios, um, it might just not solve because there are literally millions of combinations you can have with these fixities and all these members. Uh, it might just not be able to pick up um, the restraint um, error and it will just sort of bypass that and just fail to solve. Uh, so one thing I'll always look at um, is the member end fixities. And uh, one, one quick check that I would do is just change all these to fully fixed. Um, and you can do that in the data sheet just by, uh, you know, dragging and dropping uh, as you would in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, the other way you can do it, which is probably a little bit quicker, is just control A and click members. And then you can change them all just by going 
frame and then apply and that'll apply all your members with the nfix cities to f uh, so the identical means is just a faster way of doing it and i would just run a, a solve on that just to simply put that um just to make sure that that is what's causing the issue and you can see here that it was some sort of restraint issue and then what i can start to do is play around with parts of the model um you know maybe just changing the fixities on this half of the model and see if I can identify exactly what member is causing that issue if the solver is not telling me um, what member is causing that problem. Uh, the same goes with supports as well. So um, the same way you would change the member and fixities, I would also um, go to the data sheet and just review the, the restraint codes of um, the supports. We often find sometimes there's, there's one that's just way too uh, free. So, you know, you've got no, no um, restraint in sort of the XYZ translation or rotation, um, which is causing that support to move um, to infinity, really, because there's no there's nothing restraining it in either direction. So um, issues like that, you know, if you see anything unusual with a lot of ours, I would try to just change that to a fully fixed connection or a fully fixed support and seeing if your model solves. Something I often do when I open up a, a user's model that's having difficulty uh, solving is, is inspect it for anything that's um, abnormal or different uh, that I would have otherwise experienced in my other structural modeling. So for instance, um, I look for things like rigid links, I look for cables, plates. Um, I look for anything that's not quite um, a typical structural uh, element um, or something that's a little bit different to something that this user's previously solved. Um, in this case, as an example, um, we can see we've got some um, odd looking plate plates there. Um, really plates would don't have much difficulty solving, but in this case I've actually gone through and, and made a, a, an error um, to simulate a, a broken model. Um, and so what I'll, I'll do is I'll try to run a solve uh, and it'll come back with, with some form of a solve error, but it's not really giving me much information. I can view um, the tips in my documentation, but it's not gonna go into specifics of this particular error, it's just a general solve error. Um, so I will, from that information, I'll look at yeah, what's different in this model. And I can see these two plates. And so a great place for me to start would just be to delete the plates. And let's bring it back to what I would consider a pretty uh, standard structural model. Uh, just structural members, supports, pretty much a typical analysis model, and run a solve there. And I can see that solved successfully. So that's pretty much broken it down to, or isolated the issue to being one of those two plates. So I'll control Z it and I'll solve this plate. And that's solved okay. So really we've uh, identifying it to being uh, this, this plate as being the trouble or the, the plate with the issue. Um, and what I'll do is just click it I can inspect it. Um, there's a very, very small thickness on it. Maybe that's causing some sort of an issue. Um, but what I can do is just copy my nodes, delete the plate, and just re-add the plate. Maybe in, in some other manipulation of the model, like I was moving nodes or some, some sort of transformation um, operation that maybe didn't create the node um, or connect the node to the plate correctly. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just paste that back in, um, add the plate thickness, apply it, and then see if that solves. I'm now getting a solve. Uh, so sometimes just deleting uh, parts of the model or some, some issue that you've isolated and then re-adding it um, can fix the issue. Um, and they're often really difficult to, to locate those problems in the structural model, but I hope that helps. Another really common issue we find um, is the unit system. So sometimes um, there might be some input error where um, the users used uh, millimeters instead of inches or um, feet instead of inches, um, which create a really slender um, shape or a really large shape um, in the cross section. And what that'll do is either create a really, really, a member with a really, really small stiffness or a really, really large stiffness, which will impact the results or prevent the, the model from solving altogether. Um, one of the easiest way to, ways to inspect this, uh, your model and, and kind of prevent this from happening is just running the uh, 3D model and you'll easily identify which members are sort of uh, too slender or too large. And we can see here that I've got this, you know, almost hair thin like uh, member, which has obviously um, been incorrectly input. Um, so that's a really easy uh, 
issue to identify. Um, we've also got um, things like the repair model will pick up um, the reasonability check, should pick it up, but uh, there, there are cases where um, the input kind of uh, is right on the edge of that tolerance, so it might not get detected by the repair model functionality, and it can significantly um, reduce the accuracy of your model if you have um, a member that is either too stiff or, or not stiff enough. So another scenario we often come across um, is where the structural model is solving, but we're, we're, we're getting some results um, that we wouldn't expect to see um, or we wouldn't have anticipated um, and don't really make logical sense. Uh, a very common one of these is that the results aren't symmetrical. So if I have a model that is completely symmetrical um, and I'm seeing higher stresses on one side or high deflection on one side, um, or I'm seeing failures where I really wouldn't expect to see failures, um, they can often be that the model has gone through successfully and solved, but there is some issue with the model um, and something that we need to locate to identify um, in order to repair and make sure that results we're getting are really accurate. Um, so in this scenario, uh, maybe I'm, I'm seeing that there, it's not symmetrical. I'm getting a lot of stresses here for some reason. It doesn't really make sense. Um, one of the, the quickest and easiest ways I post process in post-processing, I identify these issues is just through deflection and then just animate the deflection by scrolling the mouse and holding S down, the key S key down. I can also do this as well. So this easily lets me identify where a, an issue in the model is. And I can see here that support is, is not really restrained or not restrained enough. And um, that's causing this member to deflect and all these members to experience a lot more stress than I would have expected. So scrolling your mouse um, and animating the deflection helps you identify any nodes that might be disconnected to other members because you can see um, the members aren't connected and they're not deflecting together or you can see supports that aren't restrained enough and or really extreme deflections if the member isn't stiff or um, you know you've got some section some unit input errors as well that will also be identified through scaling the deflection. Uh, and that will help me then go back and identify and, and repair um, the support there in, in this case or whatever issue is causing that um, extreme deflection. So another issue we come across often is um, if we're experiencing really large deflections um, or a member that's failing pretty much across the board. So if I look at the summary, it's failing stresses, um, deflection checks um, and yield checks as well um, by excessive amounts as well. Um, and it doesn't really seem logical. Um, I'll use my deflection um, scale to identify where there's an issue and I can see that the deflection is actually moving upwards, which obviously doesn't make much logical sense. Um, I've got all down forces or negative forces in the Y. Um, how, how could my member possibly be pushing upwards? Um, and there's no real error in the solve. I'm just getting really large deflections um, and it's not really making much sense. Um, what I would recommend is running a buckling analysis um, too, because what could be happening in the FEA is that member is buckling um, and causing extreme deflection in that um, area. And then also, obviously, that the um, impact of that across the entire model is causing other members to fail. And that's identified as um, some buckling being occurring in the member in the members. Uh, it'll also identify which member that is that is buckling. Um, so I can actually see it's uh, buckling in this in this area as well and see the buckling shape. So if you are getting deflection values that are really extreme, um, run a buckling analysis, make sure that none of your members are buckling um, to ensure that the accuracy of your model is, um, is good. So I hope that's been helpful. Uh, I hope that it helps guide you through some of the structural analysis models that you're having that uh, do have some difficulties or issues. Or if you're receiving any results that don't really make sense, um, hopefully this video helps you identify what's causing those issues and helps you repair them a lot quicker. Um, if, you, if none of these tips work for you, you've always got us as support. You can visit our live chat in the bottom right corner of the window and one of our friendly engineering staff will help you with that model. Um, we're able to see your models in real time so we can assist you, assist you from our end quite quickly um, and move you forward on your projects. So if you have any questions, please email us at support at skysiv.com. Otherwise, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more video content like this and hope to see you in the software.